It's been months since members of the glazing industry have come together in person, but for two days last week, they got the next best thing, the combined GlassCon Global VE and Glass Expo VE. Organized by U.S. Glass and DWM magazines and the Finishing Contractors Association International, the virtual event included seminars and presentations, a trade show, and networking. Anthony Darkangelo, FCA CEO, began by welcoming attendees to the event. As you may have already noticed, this year's event is, is a little bit different than what we've had in, in previous years. Instead of sitting in a room and looking up at a stage, me talking to you, uh, we're each at our homes, maybe at our offices, and, and watching from a screen. While the format and structure is different, I'm excited for the opportunities this conference will generate for the architectural glass industry. We are a community dedicated to collaboration and innovation. And the only way forward is through this together and together we'll make it through, no doubt. Presenters provided in-depth discussion on different topics, including climate change. In his keynote address, Dr. Franz Prettenthaler spoke about causes and impacts of climate change, as well as the role of glass in a sustainable future. For the glass industry as an emitter of CO2. Well, first we have to say that it's not so dramatic, but the glass industry really needs to closely look into which alliances with other construction materials it enters. We have seen concrete, not so good. Steel really has to do a lot of decarbonization also aluminium per ton has got quite some uh, energy consumption and carbon emission issues to solve. So the question would also for high rise buildings certainly will be a research topic uh, of the future. During the transatlantic debate, panelists continued the climate change discussion, talking about how the architectural glass industry can have a positive impact. Yeah, we're, we're now going to think about buildings in, in, you know, in a variety of conditions. So right now, if you've got a window in the city that I live in, I want to make sure I can close it. I don't want any outside air coming in through that window right now. It's totally unhealthy. But for most of the year, I want, I want that building to breathe. Uh, for most of the year, I want that, that glass to generate power. I want integrated PVs. I want, you know, glass is very important to, to just, a, you know, just the essential you know, back, you know, the background of a lot of materials that we use in buildings. So I think it's, it's how can we be smarter as individuals and as organizations and as communities at, you know, like testing what we're doing under these three lenses, climate, COVID, and commercials. Attendees also got to hear a glass industry outlook report from KMR research director, Nick St. Dennis, who discussed potential impacts of COVID-19 on the glass industry. You know, the near future impact should be somewhat minimal. We went, we went over some of those numbers. Um, the main reason for that is because current construction that's going on is, is going on. But, um, but the construction starts uh, numbers that we're seeing come out um, are a bit pessimistic. And once those, star those starts are delayed and once the current work that's being done over the next year or two, um, dwindles out and move on to next projects. You know, those backlogs are gonna shrink a little bit and then um, the new construction starts um, are gonna eventually um, come into play and affect us. We'll be right back after this short break. The program also included two live panel discussions. The first, titled The Door and Window Industry in a Post-Pandemic World, was moderated by DWM and U.S. Glass Editorial Director Tara Tafra with panelists Jeff Jackson, President and CEO of PGT Innovations, 
and Ed Callahar, president of Window Depot. The session took a close look at what the industry has been like these past six months amid COVID-19. Uh, if you look at our workforce, quite frankly, it's been tough, I guess, kind of post-pandemic to get labor. I think that's, that's mm -hmm. been a key issue for all manufacturing and retail and distribution as well. Uh, even though unemployment's, you know, call it almost 9% now, uh, it's still incredibly difficult to uh, get labor. We're probably here at PGT, we're probably about 175 people short wow. uh, throughout all our facilities. So we, we, we've hired 100 over the last probably five weeks. Uh, so we're trying to get folks in, trying to, uh, you know, increase capacity in production. Uh, because quite frankly, I think the industry we all serve, the housing uh, construction industry, hasn't been hit as hard. I mean, they're still building homes. Uh, and I'm sure you guys are still installing windows. So, so uh, you know, our dealer base is busy. Uh, we're busy here. And uh, really, if you look post-pandemic here, the biggest issue is just getting enough, getting enough labor. And for anyone thinking of buying new equipment, I had the opportunity to moderate the live panel discussion titled, you're purchasing new equipment, what to know before you buy. John Dwyer, president of Syracuse Glass and Louis Moreau, head of technology and innovation with Agnora, joined me to bring the fabricator perspective, while Nancy Mamaro, president and CEO of Mappy, and Mike Rosato from Salem Flat Glass and Mira weighed in from the machinery side. We tried to understand uh, what are the needs, which uh, are the dimension of glass, you know, each customer could be in a different uh, business. It could be someone that does internal, someone that does construction. So we try to figure out which, uh, which numbers, which size of uh, uh, glass they need to process. And then if they have space available, the power in the area, and um, then sometime the best thing I always suggest, we always suggest is like maybe to visit their site. So to better understand what they need and help them on a drawing, on a space wise to have them, you know, to help them on the process. In addition to the educational sessions, 80 exhibitors took part in the virtual interactive trade show. Attendees could easily navigate booth to booth, chat with exhibitors about new products, download and save product information, and watch company videos. Participants also stayed connected in the interactive networking lounge where they chatted about seminars, the trade show, and other industry topics. And we can't forget social and networking opportunities. A virtual 5K to support St. Jude Children's Research Hospital kicked off the event with several industry professionals participating, including more than 25 from Woods Power Grip. Other social activities included a virtual wine tasting sponsored by Groves Inc. and led by Chris Bronzo from DMR Associates, morning yoga and meditation, and a closing happy hour. In total, nearly 1,100 people from around the globe came together for the event. Virtual events aren't likely to fully replace in-person trade shows and conferences. For now, they can help bring the industry together, and many participants told us how impressed they were with that. As Brian Gallagher with McKeegan Equipment and Supply told us, it's just nice having an option in the new COVID world to still be able to connect with current customers and new ones. We'd also like to give a special thank you to Platinum Partner Safety First and Bronze Partners Diamond Fusion International and Carrare. While it's too soon to say what 2021 will bring, discussions are already underway for future virtual events. Stay tuned to usglassmag.com for news and announcements as they're made available.